like that. That don't get you stirred up, nothing will. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. All right. Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church this glorious Easter morning. Uh, welcome to those who are here in the sanctuary with us and to those who are joining us by the live streams. Good to have you with us. Okay, this Tuesday, Pastor Summer is going to be at the um, Vanilla Bean downtown from 3 to 12. And she's going to be working on a book and some Bible studies. And if you would like to come and join her, feel free to do so. And that starts this Tuesday and it will go through the 25th of May. Okay, Wednesday nights. Our meal will begin at 545. The meals are $5 uh, each person. We are having them catered. And, but if you have a family of three or more, uh, the limit is $15. It's the most you have to pay. And if you can't pay that, don't let that keep you from coming. Come and join us anyway. The adults will be studying an overview of the book of Psalms with a focus on their original intent, which is worship. The children are studying foundations of faith, and the youth are, are having a get-together or some activities for them. So there's something for everyone. Come and join us. Next Sunday, April the 11th, we will have our business meetings. Trustees will meet at 2, finance will meet at 3, and then the church council is at 4. And if you are on any of these committees if you were on any of these committees last year or have been asked to serve this year, you need to attend these meetings. It's very important. This is where we conduct the business of the church. We make plans. We, um, everyone needs to be here. And then on Mondays, starting on the 12th at Monday noon, our Covenant, Wesley Covenant group meets and we're gonna begin the study of the pursuit of God which is a classic book by the renowned theologian A.W. Tozer. And anyone can join us if you would like to have a copy of the book. They are $10, and you may see Pastor Summer for that. We will meet tomorrow, but we won't start our study till the next Monday. Okay, there will, be, will not be any praise or prayer time this afternoon. Tuesday, April the 6th at 9 a.m. in the morning, prime timers are going to meet at Medley's. This is a good time to get together, eat a meal, have some fellowship. So if you would like to be part of that group or already part of it, we'll see you Friday, I mean Tuesday, I'm sorry, Tuesday, Tuesday, 9 a.m. at Medley's. Are there any other announcements? Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus the only sinless one. We, we revere your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know no other than you, and we call upon your name. Come, all faithful, let us revere Christ's holy resurrection. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Blessing the Lord always, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, Jesus has destroyed death by death. In his name, amen. as we sing number 302, Christ the Lord is risen today.
morning, church. It is so good to be with you all this morning in the house of our Lord to celebrate the fact that our Savior is risen. Do we have any prayer requests, any concerns, or praises that we wish to lift up to the Lord this day? Praises. Uh, the Stations of the Cross Friday, I'll start with that. That was, if any of y'all experienced that, you know what a blessing and, and a good time that was had. So I praise God for that. I also want to praise God for our children's party yesterday. We had 18 children, and I think they thoroughly enjoyed themselves. And one little girl told me it was the best day she'd ever had. So that made all the work and everything getting ready for it, you know, that made it worth it. It was just worth it. Yeah. Uh, so I do want to praise God for our children. Yes. I feel blessed by our children. It's, it has been a very productive week, but a blessed week. And it's all come up to this moment. And I'm, as pastor, I feel very blessed by all of you and I'm excited to see so many of you who are here for the sunrise service, for breakfast, for the early service, and all of you and all of you who are joining us on the live stream, it reminds me why God called me to this. And I hope today we, we are reminded that we, we are alive because our Savior is alive. Amen. And that is a praise. That is a big praise. Do we have other concerns or praises to lift up to our Lord this morning? Dot Perry. Well, let's remember Mr. James Sandlin. He has moved to NHC in Smithville. Um, so watch your newsletters that are coming out this week for his new address. And send him cards if you can, as you can. It he would greatly appreciate those. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. God, I thank you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the blessings that you have given to us and the ways that we can praise you and your Holy Spirit being in this room and with all of us. It's just such a beautiful day, God. I thank you for each person here and ask for your blessings to be upon each and every one of them who are part of this service in one way or another. God, I know we have some families in our midst, some individuals who are a part of this church, an extended family who are suffering from illnesses, having procedures done this week. Some are, have health concerns. Some are battling cancer. And some are still battling COVID-19 and the effects of that virus. We have unspoken prayer requests, things that are on our hearts, and we lift those up to you as well. We thank you, God, that you can hear our prayers, that you listen to us. Help us to listen to you, and to follow into your will. Thank you, Lord. We lay all of our concerns, all of our worries, all of our cares down at your feet. You said your burden is easy. Your yoke is light. And we can cast our cares upon you. And we thank you for taking us. Forgive us when we fail you. And help us to be who you created us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, I invite you to stand as you are able. And we have this wonderful Easter lit liturgy. If you will speak the words that are in bold print. Speak this as you believe it. 
Jesus Christ in your triumph over the grave and your resurrection from death, the heavens and earth rejoice. Thank you, God, for you have made us victorious over sin. On the mountain of the Lord, all people will feast, and all wine shall be poured. We praise you, O God, for you have prepared a table before us, and our cups overflow. The Lord has swallowed up death forever. The Lord has wiped away the tears from all faces. We praise you, O God, for you have brought us from death to life. The disgrace of God's people have been taken away from the earth because the Lord has spoken. We praise you, O God, for you have given us joy and gladness. Amen. remain standing as we sing number 322 up from the grave heroes we'll sing all three verses Okay, it's time for our children to come forward.
Well, good morning. Okay. <laughs> Are y'all awake? <laughs> okay. Well, let's try that again. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. Y'all have had an exciting uh, couple of days. We're celebrating what? Easter. Very good. Celebrating Easter. A lot of fun things to do when we're celebrating Easter. What do y'all think about surprises? Do you like surprises? Good surprises, right? Sometimes we're surprised and it's not a good surprise, so that's not very good. But when we have a good surprise, we like that, don't we? We get excited. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> Okay, okay, I understand what you said at the 8 o'clock service, okay? I, I get it now. I've got it. You'll understand that later. <laughs> oh, me. Savannah, you're one in a million. And, and I love all of y'all. Y'all are so cute. We had a row full at 8 o'clock, and now we've got a row full at 1030. This is just wonderful. You children are wonderful. Okay. Well, on the early, in the early morning, on the Sunday after Jesus was crucified, two women went to his grave where um, Jesus was buried, and they were going to anoint him with spices. But when they got there, they got a big surprise. The stone had been rolled away from the mouth of the tomb, and Jesus was gone. His body was gone. Can you imagine how surprised they were? That would be a surprise, wouldn't it? Expecting to see Jesus' body in the tomb and then it not being there? You bet a lion got it. <laughs> well, no, thankfully, a lion did not get it. Thankfully, he didn't. <laughs> that didn't happen. And so while they were standing there wondering what had happened to Jesus' body, two men appeared to them. These men were in clothes that were just shining like lightning. They were just dazzling. So how do you think those women felt then? I think they got frightened. I would get frightened if two men like that appeared to me. And the men spoke to the women. And the, they said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He has risen just as he told you he would. Well, the women were excited to hear these words. And then they remembered what Jesus had told them, that he would be crucified and that he would rise again on the third day. Now they were no longer surprised at finding an empty grave because they knew why. They knew that Jesus had risen. So they rushed back to tell his disciples and anyone else that they had seen, that they had been to the tomb and that the tomb was empty, that Jesus had risen. Okay, and this makes us happy. This was a good surprise. Jesus has risen. The grave is empty. He loves us very much. And that's why we celebrate Easter today because Jesus the Christ is risen. Okay, I want you to pray after me, okay? Dear Father, we praise you. Jesus has risen, just as he said he would. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can say Christmas. <laughs> I want to remind everyone we got the website up and running. It's on the go to that website on the top right corner. There is a button that says give. You can click on that and you can give electronically. We also have the plates in the back of the sanctuary. You can give as you come in or as you leave or also during the offertory. Thank you all for your continued giving to this church. And as I've said before, it's not just your financial giving, but also your giving of yourself when you're present here and when, you're, when we're doing ministries together. And so thankful. I'm thankful to see all of you guys today. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the many, many gifts that you have given to us, all the blessings that you have given and so many that we, we take for granted. 
Help us, Lord. Call us, lead us to do what you want us to do and who you want this church to be. Help us, Lord, as we walk forward and we take those steps into the vision that you have given to us and in doing your will and being the, the church that shines your light in this community and in this world. Thank you for the blessings that you have already given to us and the blessings that you will. Just help us, Lord, to be who you've called us to be and to use the gifts that you have given to us to build your kingdom and to do what is right in your eyes and in only your eyes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please stand for the doxology.
almost every day, I hear my two younger kids come running up to me, and they're both shouting, Mom, Mom, Mom! And they're both wanting to get to me first so that they can tell me their side of the story because apparently somebody has done something wrong. And they're talking at the same time and yelling at me trying to get to me first. So I have to say, okay, stop, breathe, okay, one at a time, and then I have to make the decision. I go, okay, you can go first, and you're going to stay there and not interrupt. And so I hear one side of it, of the story, and then I hear the other side of the story, and I'm like, okay, just give me the details. Just, just give me the basic details. Just tell me who did what, where, and is anything broken or anybody dead? That's all I want to know. Just give me the basics. And here's the deal. Here's Savannah, my precious, precious child, my youngest, who is full of drama. And when she tells her story, she loves to fill it with wild tales and over ex Okay, I'm sorry. Am I embarrassing you? Okay, because it's wild. Somebody's either dying, the house is on fire, or somebody has broken a leg. It, it, it's, it's never simple. And then there's Cutler, and God bless him. He, he has autism, and so he's a man of few words. And so if he does something wrong, I say, Cutler, did you do this? And his answer will be, I don't know. Or, no. Or sometimes he'll say, no, it was Savannah's fault. And that's all he'll tell me. I'm like, tell me more, tell me more. And I'm having to pull information out of him. I'm like, just give me the details, both of you. If you just give me the details, it would be great. It would make my life as mom so much easier. Well, today we're reading the resurrection story out of the Gospel of Mark. And the Gospel of Mark is the shortest of the Gospels. It gives you the very basic, most important details of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. The most important details. That's it. It's the shortest of the Gospels. It was also the first written. The very first Gospel written. And it was about 40 years after Jesus' resurrection and then ascension when the Gospel was written. And it may not include too much details after that because they were living the story at that point. And so the gospel was written essentially for the early church to have these important details in written form for each church to have these important details written down so that they could remember, remember them, understand them, and then go and tell others. So that is where we are reading the resurrection story today. And you're going to find out just how short it is. If you will stand as you are able, let us read Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on in the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out 
through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for these words. To know that you are alive and get to read the story once again. Help us to take it in and to live it as though it is happening for us, to us, today. Give me the words to speak that they're not mine, but are your words, God. Help me to speak the truth in this message. Help us all to learn from you and to take those three words, He is risen, to everyone we meet. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. What I read to you was literally all that was in this gospel for a while. That's literally how this gospel ended. So let me just tell you the details. Jesus died the day before Passover. On the Jewish calendar, a day begins at sundown, sunset, right? So a full 24 hours is from sunset to the following sunset. So Jesus died during the day on Friday. When evening came, it started the next day, and it was Passover. And no one is really allowed to do anything. It is a Sabbath day except remember, commemorate, and celebrate Passover. So for those whole 24 hours after Jesus died, the women were not allowed to go to the tomb and prepare the body for burial. So early Sunday morning why it's known as the third day, they get up and they go to the tomb. And while they're headed in that direction, it dawns on one, two, a couple of them, and they start th- saying, okay, we, when Jesus was placed in this tomb, the Roman guards were able to roll this big, huge stone over the entrance. How are we going to get that stone rolled back? Maybe they'll help us. Maybe That might not be likely. Who knows? We'll have to see when we get there. They get to the tomb. There's no Roman guards. The stone has indeed been rolled back, and there's no body, but there's a heavenly being that they've never seen before. Now, we have seen pictures of angels. We have seen movies and TV shows that show us what angels look like so to speak, they'd never seen one before. Have you ever seen an angel? Probably not. So just imagine, if you will, put yourself into those women's sandals and think what they would have thought, what they would have felt when they saw this heavenly being sitting at the place where Jesus was supposed to be laid. No wonder they were frightened, right? So what does the angel say to them? Don't be afraid. Don't be frightened. Kind of like the same thing that Gabriel told Mary all those many years ago. Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus. He's not here. He is risen, okay? Go tell Peter and the others. So they take it in as best as they can, and they're processing this as they flee from the tomb in excitement because Jesus indeed has risen and is alive, and they just saw an angel. So they're processing this information as best as they can. They're silent. They go, they leave, and they get to Peter, and they tell him just what the angel said. And I like this version. I like this gospel. Because as I've said, this is literally the ending to the gospel of Mark. And maybe a decade later, they added this longer version. And I'll tell you more about that in just a minute. But that last part of verse 8, and all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself 
sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. That's the end. But think about it. That is so important. Those few words are packed with so much importance there. Mark was the first gospel, so it was kind of the blueprint for the other gospels. So you have Matthews, you have Luke's, and they give a few more details about Jesus' birth, a few more details about his teaching, and then his death, his resurrection, and they give us a few more details about what happens after the resurrection, Jesus appearing to the disciples. And in the coming weeks, we'll go over those stories because they are important. But we cannot miss this simple statement right here about the resurrection. We cannot miss this simple statement. That's why I don't, I don't think Mark's ending here is a bad one. I think it is a good one. I love this version. The end of the gospel, as it is originally written, simply states, they told Peter and those around him exactly what they were told to say. And then Jesus came around later to tell them again and to show them the good news. And then they went and told others what they had seen. From east to the rest, to the west, the story spread. He is risen. The most important words ever spoken. He is risen. And that is what is commanded of us to tell everyone. When God tells me something important that I'm supposed to do or to understand, he will tell me in detail and he'll tell me one time. And I have to be sure that I am listening and that I get it. And not only am I listening, did I get it, but then I have to be able to do whatever God's telling me to do or to understand whatever wisdom he has imparted to me. Do you notice that there is an action that follows that? It's not just about listening, but when you listen, you listen to actually comprehend, to understand, right? And to do something with. This is what makes this resurrection story so important. Mark wrote this gospel in the second half of the first century. It may have been no more than 40 years since Jesus was resurrected and ascended. The ones reading this account knew what had happened afterwards because they were living it. Over the course of the next 20 years, the other gospels were written. This gospel gives us the most important details to be memorized for the sole purpose of us, yes, even us today, to take this message and tell others about Jesus. Jesus' resurrection was the single most important event for humankind as it gave us eternal life, victory over eternal death from sin. The second most important event was Jesus' death when he died for our sins. And the third was his birth when he came to be with us. Without those things happening, without his birth, we couldn't have had his death. Without his death, we couldn't have had the resurrection. But without any of that, we could not have had salvation from sin and death and to be able for our souls to live for all eternity. The imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. That's what that means. The important part of the story, of this story, isn't just the fact that the angel told the women that Jesus is risen, although that is beautiful and we need to know it, but it is what the angel told the women to do with that message. What did the angel tell the women to do with that message? Go tell Peter and the other disciples. And then what happened? Jesus came to the disciples, to Peter, 
And then he said, go and tell everybody. What are we to do with this message? What are we to do with this? We cannot have the resurrection without their first being death. The same can be said that we cannot have redemption without our death to sin in this world. Those three words tell the story of our redemption. He is risen. So what are you going to do with this message? What are you going to do with those three words? Do you believe them? Has the gospel, this good news, the story of Jesus transformed your life? Who are you going to tell? Because here's the deal. We come every year and we hear the story. We know the story, right? We know the gospel telling of Jesus rising the tomb being empty, him going to the disciples. We know the story, but do we know the story? Do we know the good news in our soul? Do we fully experience Jesus being alive today? He is alive, and he is alive in those of us who have accepted him as our Savior. And we know he has redeemed us and saved us, and we, too, have new life. We, too, experience resurrection. Our souls will go on and live for all eternity with our Father in heaven. That's the message of the resurrection. Those three important words. He is risen. What are you going to do with this message? Who are you going to tell with this message? Do you live this message? He is risen. Indeed, he is risen. And he's alive in me. And he's alive in you if you've accepted him. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I invite you to come up for prayer. I'll be right here and I can pray with you. You can pray on that chancel rail by yourself. If you wish, you can pray right right where you are. Please stand as we sing. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's see more over there. He lives. Number 310.
Jesus is alive. Do you feel it? Do you know it? He is risen. risen Go and tell everyone that your Savior is alive and lives in you. Amen.